All right. So as I was saying, we're not going to use an edit. I'll, I'll have it disabled here just so we can remember that this is where our deformed version should be. We could probably just use a null, but anyway, let's actually deform this in another way. Let's use, and I don't mean deform the volume in another way. We work so hard on this. No, let's deform our tet mesh in another way. So I'm going to say, let's put a taper down. So here they put, or do it over here in the, there we go, linear taper. So put that here. Again, that's the one leading to our, our volume. It's the one that is the deforming one. So linear taper is going to deform the points of our tet mesh, which will then deform our volume. So let's set some things up. The taper we want to be the thing that is going to cause it to be wide on the bottom and then get smaller towards the top. So we need that to happen in the y-axis direction. We need it to, again, be 28 tall, as is, has been the case many times now. And let's just see what the taper looks like. So this is a taper, right? Let's just look at our result. Oh, we're in, there we go. Sure enough, we're now tapering the entire volume. Isn't that crazy? So this is why the tet uh, idea is so powerful. It's because even though it's a little messy and weird, all the tets that it's making in different places, as long as they are all moved in the same way, like this, the end result ends up being great anyway, and fast. So in any case, let's do something a little bit more interesting than that. Let's do a, a ramp-based uh, taper. So we'll have it start big on the bottom, and then maybe by around here, we'll say 0.2. It can still be like 2 thirds of the way up. Remember to change this to a B-spline. We want everything to be B-splines, I think, most of the time, just so it's nice and curvy. And then this one by the end here can be like that. So you can see it. Uh, there it is. So that is the taper in blue that we came up with. So it actually looks like this. And our end result looks like this. It is, you know, okay. One of the downsides to the tet mesh method is that the the end the final look is really dependent on although I guess this would be true of pretty much any deformer is how much res capturing resolution we have meaning in this box here if we only had two divisions it wouldn't look very good but the more divisions we add here the better the better and better it will converge on a final a good final look and you can see it's still quite fast. So we can have quite a few divisions here. And now it really does look like that taper that we saw. Cool. So that's the first one. That's that's it. That's done. Um, I guess while we're here, we might as well have it do the temperature also. I don't want to forget about that. So temperature. And that's the nice thing about volume samples, that you can literally just ask for the name of the volume itself. You don't have to like identify it by the primitive number. You can just say sample the temperature volume in the third input. So we got them both. Very good. Very nice. Uh, this will remain a fast operation as long as there's a, not a lot of voxels. You know, that's going to be the biggest bottleneck. You know, once we go to like 0.1 here, it's going to take eight times as long because it's twice as many voxels in each axis. It's still not the worst, especially in terms of the overall render time is going to be much worse than this. But it is nice to keep this at a pretty big voxel size while we're, while we're playing with it. So anyway, what else do we want to do? Let's look at the twist now. So now the twist is in terms of this taper. It's starting to look really cool, isn't it? Yes, I can hear you all saying. It's very, very cool. So what else do we want to do? Let's do a bend. So we just did a taper. 
Now let's do a bend. Bend is actually the same exact tool as taper, which is the bend tool. <laughs> it's just that the bend tool has various things you can do with it. You can do a bend, you can do a taper, you can do a twist, you can mash potato. In our case, we're gonna do a bend afterwards. So here you go, this is what a bend looks like. Uh, for the hundredth time, we need to capture it in the Y direction. We need to capture the whole thing, with the 28. Um, we can change what our up vector is. I'm gonna change mine to X. And now when we bend, it's bending along the X axis as though it were a hinge. So there you go, so that's a bend. The nice thing about the bend is that the more we bend it, so let's do like a little bit of a bend. I'll do a more of a bend actually. The more we bend it, and there you go, it's bent, the more interesting the twist becomes. See? So if I have, oh, wrong way. If I have no bend, obviously it looks like this, but as I start to introduce some bend, you actually you see part of this on the down here go to the right, and the stuff towards the top goes more drastically to the left, and then the stuff even higher up goes even more drastically to the right. So you get this kind of crazy look like this. So what I want to happen is, instead of this just being still, we can add a secondary overall waviness to it by animating the bend back and forth a little bit, just swinging back and forth a little bit over time, which will be which will cause our twist here to kind of be snaking back and forth like this, the way that a tornado does. Like it's always kind of, its overall shape is often just subtly shifting also over time. So, and that look cool? Like, did you ever think you could do this with volumes? Pretty wild. So, anyway, so let's use a sign function. I've heard of that. The classic back and forth function. So, sign of the times. So, we'll start with some number like this. And again, we can go isolate and channel list, and we can see it. So that's cool. I don't really want it to happen quickly. You know, that's the thing. The faster we have this happen, it'll be too much. Although it's actually not even moving that much right now. So let's have it move like times 50. So here we go. It's moving way too much, obviously. It's insane. So we could probably do a tenth of that, so there you go. Now you can see it's it's moving back and forth, which is nice, but it's still, it's doing it at a frequency that's too high. We can also kind of modify where it starts. So right now it's starting straight up and down because sine of, of zero is zero. So I'm gonna say time t times 40 plus some amount of offset. So it's starting a little bit into our time function, or our sine function rather. As usual, this is all arbitrary. I just think it looks cool maybe to start on a kind of snaky frame and maybe it'll move back towards straightening out over the course of this thing. So that's pretty cool. And it seems very thin overall, especially let's, if I bring all my other, our friends back in here, now that we've tapered it, like now that it's, it's become more narrow here, it actually might be nice to, to just arbitrarily widen it. Here, if you learn nothing else from this lesson, it's this. You can use a transform to make things bigger. <laughs> Did you know that? Bet you didn't. Uh, I don't know how much bigger. Let's do two on each axis. I'm not doing two in the Y axis, mind you. I just want to make it wider. It's definitely way too much. Hmm. Maybe a little bit less than that. Do something like that. So there you go. So that kind of just compensated a little bit for the taper making it uh, more narrow. That's pretty much it. Um, I want to render it again, but I would point out that before when we were rendering it, this was a voxel size of 0.1.
now that I this is the actual volume that we're rendering, or this has created the new volume, it's 0.2. So this 0.2 voxel size volume was reading, was sampling this 0.1 size volume, which is fine. But just so you know, our volume is now rougher than it used to be. So we should probably, now that we're done working on this, put this to 0.1, and you can see how much sharper it just got. It's beautiful, isn't it? Let's go find frame 62 and render this frame real quick just to make sure everything is looking cool. I'll save this one, do that. And assuming this looks okay, which it should, uh, we'll, I'll render out this frame range or maybe I'll just do 24 frames again, we'll see. But certainly seems to be working fine. We went from that to that. You can see the same structures are obviously still there. It's just wider on the bottom now and more narrow on the top and it's gonna slowly undulate like a snake also. And that's pretty much gonna be it, I think, for the middle. So as long as this looks good in animation, uh, then we're done with that too. So let's go see. And actually, before we start, for no reason at all, I'm gonna switch this to negative five. Flip. Something about that. All right, and now we're gonna do it. Boom, see in a few. And here we have it, the latest and greatest. And it's pretty cool. Uh, you can plainly see all of the stuff we've worked on, the negative space, the actual taper of course, and even the slow movement of the overall shape. Maybe too slow, but that's fine, I'm gonna keep it like that. Uh, again, you can see the curve, you can see it increasing to around here. You can see it coming, going back the other way again, and by the last frame here, it's actually pretty straight again. So it was just a slow, subtle movement on top of the, uh, the overall movement. Awesome.